Hello friends, welcome to this session. In today's session, we'll see how you can deploy a container in AWS ECS Fargate using Azure DevOps Pipeline. In one of my earlier sessions, I have shown how you can build your application, create a Docker image, and then push it to AWS ECR, the container registry. So I will share the link below. And now we will extend from there, picking up that container image, and then deploying into AWS ECS Fargate. Okay, so before we start, let me explain you this project and the build pipeline. This project is written in Go, very small one, hello world.go. And whenever it runs, it will tell you which image is running. Also, this is a pipeline which will be building this particular project. It always runs on trigger main. It is using self-hosted agent, which is running on my Windows laptop. And these are the tasks which it performs to build. It cleans up the workspace then it builds the project and here i am replacing token in some files especially in the hello world.go file and task definition for the fargate if you see here under fargate folder i have created this fargate task definition and here in the image i will be replacing the image id by using build id so that way i will have a new image uploaded to ecr whenever a new build is done. So let's get back to our build pipeline. And once these tokens are replaced, I'm taking this particular Fargate task definition.json into drop file. So that will be the artifact generated by this pipeline. And then later steps are usual where it will do a Docker build and it will push that image to AWS ECR. So this build pipeline will make sure that image is made available in AWS ECR. And now, while deploying that image into AWS ECS Fargate, we will use release pipeline in Azure DevOps to deploy this particular container. So let's check the release pipeline. So let's go to releases. This is Fargate deploy release, which I've created, edit. And here in artifacts, I have made sure that it picks up the latest artifact created by build pipeline and that becomes input to the stages so the first stage which I have created is deploy to AWS ECS and it has got four tasks so if we go in here first one is agent jobs so here I am again using self-hosted agent and then the first task which I have created is to download that artifact and make it available for this deployment so this task will download the artifact from artifact staging directory then the next step is to create the ECS cluster so I'm using bash script and here I'm using the access key and secret key of a user so we have to provide these a user who has access to ECS and who has access to ECR because the image has to be pulled down and then cluster has to be created so this is a command which will create the cluster if it doesn't exist if it exists it will just leave this command so in my case I'm creating a cluster hello world cluster and these access keys and secret key for that user I've created as a variable in the release pipeline like this and you give those values this one you can lock down so that nobody can see the secret access key and give a default region now next task is to create and register task definition before I explain this, let me show you what task definition looks like. So in my project, I created a separate folder Fargate. Under that, I created this Fargate task definition.json file. And you define the task definitions similar to this, where you will have network mode AWS VPC. And this is required if you are deploying to Fargate. Execution role ARN, ECS task execution role. I will show you this in IAM. And then container definition where you will give a container name, uh, what image it has to use, uh, what ports it will map, container port and the host port, and uh, what are the CPU and memory requirements for this container and requires compatibilities with the Fargate. There are some more options, you can choose them. Uh, these are the minimum ones which are required to make the container up and running. You can actually see the register task definition documentation and go through all the options which it supports. Now coming back to our release pipeline. So for register task definition, again, I'm using the users, IAM users, access key and secret 
to get access to ECS and this command will register the task definition by giving uh, input JSON file so once the task definition is created from the output it takes the task definition version every time you run this release pipeline it will try to create a new task definition and it will have a new revision created for it so assumption here is that release pipeline will be run when some new build or a new container is to be deployed which will go into new task definition and we'll catch that task definition revision number in task version and set it up in this variable and then the last step is to create ECS service which will again use the IM user access keys and I am just echoing what's the task version which is created for the task definition and here in the services to make sure whether service already exists the service will be hello world svc service if it exists then it will just update the service in that particular cluster with the service name and the new task definition with the new version which we have created if it is not there then it will create the service using the task definition and desired count number of containers or the task we want to run and launch type is Fargate, platform version latest and network configuration where you will mention which subnet it should run in, what security group will be applied to it and this way the ECS service will be created. So these are the four tasks which will be performed in release pipeline to deploy that container from ECR to ECS. Now I will show you what roles, permissions are required for IAM user. I am using this user, AWS ECR user and here I've given access to ECR and access to ECS. These two permissions are required because user should be able to download the image from ECR and he should be able to create cluster and make changes into ECS. You may have to give more permissions if your application is going to make call to other AWS services. Also you have to create a role which is ECS task execution role which will be assigned to the task definition used by container and that is the way it will pull the image from ECR so it will have access to ECR. This is all another role which you have to create ECS task execution role. Now everything is set so we will run the release pipeline to see how it runs. So this is and we will create a new release create release 79 I have already run multiple releases while this is running I will show you in AWS ECS under task definitions hello world task these are the definitions which it creates every time it runs so last time it ran was revision 61 the pipeline which we are running now it should create a revision 62 and then the clusters it will create cluster so hello world cluster and inside that it will create service hello world service and if you see this service is using task definition version 62 inside task definition it has created that I think the pipeline is already run and successfully completed now we go back to AWS ECS and inside the cluster service if you see task it's running this task using task definition 62 version and status is running so it's already deployed and if we click on this and see more details now here you see it has picked up image build id 727 so this is a tag i'm using now let's see try to access this using this ip public ip this public ip will change every time the container is deployed again and you see here 727 so that's the image which this container is using right now so right now 727 is being deployed the build ID we'll make one small change in the application and we'll see how this whole automation works let's say in the code this is our health check for we change this make it passed we'll edit it and we commit this now so it will change from service health check pass to service health check passed commit this will trigger a new build so it will upload a new image to AWS ECR let's go to pipelines and if you see here it has started new build
So build pipeline is done and if you see here on ECR push image it has created a new image 728 build ID. The last one which we which is running is 727. Now we go back to release pipeline and it will start the release of this particular build. So it's completed successfully. We can actually we cannot directly refresh this because when the container is deployed with the new image the public IP would have changed so we'll go back here go to the cluster in the task you see the new one is getting provisioned which is task definition 63 now task definition 63 is running so we'll go inside this task to get the IP so this is a public IP and here if you expand you can see it is using image 728 so we'll try to access this now and you see 728 and if we see health and it has become passed that is what we changed so this is very basic way of deploying an image from ECR into AWS ECS Fargate using Azure DevOps pipeline. Uh, there is a lot which needs to be done. We cannot take this as is into production right now. So you can go through the documentation and this will give you the basic understanding how you can deploy the container into AWS Fargate using Azure pipelines. In the next session, I will try to show how you can have this Fargate service behind a load balancer so that whenever the container is deployed, we don't need to change this IP the way we are going and looking out for that IP. We can use a load balancer and it will always point to the latest container which is running. So I will take that in the next session. I hope this session helps you. See you in next session. Thank you.